In this video, I will explain what Google Tag Gateway is, what are its benefits, how to configure it, and how to decide whether you need it. Let's imagine a situation. A visitor comes to your website, and on that website, there is Google Analytics installed. It might be installed with Google Tag Manager, maybe it is installed directly in the source code of the website, but that visitor is also using a browser extension that blocks tracking. Maybe it's ad blocker, maybe it's ghostery, maybe it's something else. There are plenty of such browser extensions. What this extension does is that it looks at requests sent from your website, and if those requests contain some domains like googleanalytics.com or maybe the URL contains the word gtag or googletagmatch.com or something similar, then that browser extension will block those requests, which means that Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager or other tracking codes that you have installed on your website, they will be blocked as well. To mitigate this, you could, of course, use server-side tagging. And in fact, ad blockers, they were one of the top reasons why some businesses decided to switch to server-side tagging. But the issue here is that server-side tagging requires certain technical knowledge, and it also introduces additional expenses, which some businesses cannot afford. Even though personally, I'm still a fan of server-side tagging because it gives you a lot of flexibility, it can become complex quite quickly. That's why Google, in partnership with Cloudflare, offers a different option. For those who don't want to use server-side tagging because maybe it's too complex for them, maybe it's too expensive for them, and for those who mainly use Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Google Ads, or in other words, Google's products, and they also want to increase the accuracy of the tracking, Google offers a Google Tag Gateway, which is free. Also, just to be clear, technically you can use Google Tag Gateway with server-side tagging. But the main idea that I want to communicate in this video is that you can use Google Tag Gateway and get some benefits of server-side tagging without actually using server-side tagging. So between your website and your website visitors, there would also be an intermediary, which is called Cloudflare. You could also use a different content delivery network, and there are the instructions in the documentation of Google. I will post a link to it below the video. But the setup with the Cloudflare is super simple and requires just several clicks. And that's what I will be showing in this video. Let's say that your website's URL is mywebsite.com. So instead of using googleanalytics.com slash g slash collect and whatever goes after that, with Google Tag Gateway, your Google Analytics requests would be sent to your own domain and there would be a subfolder specifically designed for analytics or for Google Tag Manager. So instead of having this URL, which is often blocked by various extensions, you would be sending data to this domain, meaning that these requests will have a much lower chance of getting blocked. The setup of this thing that I will show you in this video will be very simple. And there's mainly one requirement. Your website must be connected to Cloudflare. As I've said before, it is possible to use other content delivery networks and to configure the setup manually. But in this video, I will be showing the built-in Cloudflare integration where the steps will be very simple. If you're not familiar with what Cloudflare is, here is a super simplified explanation. Let's say that we have a website and anyone from our planet can visit your website. If you are using Cloudflare, then it acts as a middleman between the world and your website. It is primarily a content delivery network, which means that it will be loading a cached version of your website to the website visitors. So if someone is browsing from Europe, then Cloudflare will be loading your website content from one of its servers in Europe. If someone is browsing in the US, then it will load your website from the Cloudflare server in the US. So your website will be loading faster and your website server will actually be getting fewer requests, which means that if there is some spike in traffic, your website server will not notice it that much. Another benefit is that if you are getting attacked by some bots, then Cloudflare can use certain protections against bot traffic and try to block them. In this tutorial, I will not be showing how to migrate your domain to Cloudflare because this is up to you. And it depends on where are you keeping your domain right now. But I will post a link to a documentation on the general process of how to transfer your domain to Cloudflare. 
But keep in mind that Cloudflare is very popular and there is a very high chance that you will also find a video tutorial explaining how to transfer your domain from the platform where you're keeping it now to Cloudflare. For example, we have a Namecheap tutorial, we definitely have a GoDaddy tutorial and so on. So let's take a look how to configure Google Tag Gateway. In this tutorial, I will be doing that on the level of Google Tag Manager. Here is my demo website. And right now I have not installed Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics on it. We can verify that by clicking three dots here, then more tools, developer tools, then go to network. And then here I will enter, let's say gtm.js, which is part of the URL, which is related to my Google Tag Manager container. And now if I reload the page, we will not see anything related to that. So let's go to Google Tag Manager then click Google Tag Gateway. And then here you will see that in this chart, Google Tag Gateway will be applied not only to Google Tag Manager, but also to other Google's products that will be installed on my website because I will be managing them in my Google Tag Manager container. So click Continue. Then here you can expand the first step and this will be the subfolder of requests that will be used by Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, Google Ads, and other tracking codes. And again, I want to emphasize that this applies to Google's tracking codes. Technically, Google Tag Gateway can also be set up directly in Cloudflare. I can just quickly show you the location of that, but personally, I prefer this wizard right here. So in Cloudflare, here is the list of the domains that I have connected. I have not selected any of the domains and I just go to the sidebar, then tag management and Google Tag Gateway. And here I can see right now that Google Tag Gateway is inactive on both domains. So technically I could click on the domain right here and then enable it. But as I've said, I will be using this wizard right here. If you want, you can change this to something else, let's say analytics or so on. But personally, I prefer to use whatever Google suggests right here. Then the next step is to sign in into Cloudflare. So click here, then click allow. This will connect Google Tag Manager to Cloudflare and then click complete setup. And that's it. Google Tag Gateway is now enabled on your website. If I go to my demo website and I have not reloaded the page yet, which means that the page source loaded right here is before I enabled the Google Tag Gateway. Here, if I try to look for something like Google Tag Manager or gtm.js, I would not find anything because gtm is not installed. But now, if I reload the page, let's say here, or I reload the view page source, now you will see that Cloudflare itself added a Google Tag Manager container snippet and it tells the snippet to send the request to the subfolder of my own website. So this is related to Google Tag Gateway. In fact, we can copy this and then use it to see the requests coming from our website to Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics. So now if I go to the website, then enable developer tools, then go to network and enter that, and then reload the page, we will see this request. So you can click it, you can click preview, and you will see that this is actually our Google Tag Manager container. Then we have some Google Analytics requests. The reason why I have them is because in my Google Tag Manager container, which is this one right here, I have some Google Analytics tags inside the container. Therefore, Google Tag Gateway also applies to those requests. So they are sent to my own domain, then Google Tag Gateway subfolder, and then here is some information needed for Google Analytics. For example, measurement ID, then we also have a bunch of parameters. So the first benefit of Google Tag Gateway is for those who maybe have a very limiting content management system that does not have a Google Analytics integration and does not allow us to add custom codes directly to the source code of the website. So if you're dealing with that kind of limited content management system, you can still install Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager with the help of Cloudflare and Google Tag Gateway. So technically, if you're working with a new project and you want to start using Google Tag Gateway right away, 
you don't even need to add Google Analytics tracking code directly to the source code of the website. Because Cloudflare, when it loads the HTML of your code, it will add the Google Tag Manager container snippet or Google Analytics tracking code automatically. But what if you have already installed Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager in the source code of the website and you still want to use the Google Tag Gateway? This is not a problem because if you have some code already added to your website, this will respect that code and it will not conflict with it. But nevertheless, that code that was added before, it will still be using the subfolder configured in the Google Tag Gateway. Let me show you what I mean. Just several seconds ago, I paused the video and I added a Google Tag Manager container snippet directly to the source code of the website. That code is available right here. So if I look for gtm.js, this is the code that I added. Let's imagine that it was added before I enabled Google Tag Gateway. So I have this code. And then at the beginning of the code, we still have that Google Tag Gateway code added by Cloudflare. Now, if I go to the website, then open Developer Tools, go to Network, enter my subfolder, and then refresh the page, you will see that this request, which is responsible for loading Google Tag Manager container, it's still just one request right here. The number of requests did not change if we compare it to the situation before where I did not have the container snippet added to the website. So you will not be getting duplicate data. However, you're still benefiting from Google Tag Gateway because your container that was added to the website's code, it is still using the first party domain and is sending data to the subfolder. So if you have been already using Cloudflare for a while, then the setup of Google Tag Gateway is super simple. But if you are not using Cloudflare, probably the most difficult part will be the migration. But based on my experience, how I was connecting domains to Cloudflare, the process is fairly simple. Also, one more thing to mention. If you want to use Google Tag Gateway, but you're not using server-side tagging, you're not even using Google Tag Manager, you just have Google Analytics tracking code added to your website, you can still enable Google Tag Gateway. To do that, you would need to go to Admin, then Data Streams, then select your website data stream, then go to Configure Tag Settings, go to Admin, then Google Tag Gateway, and it will be displayed as not set up. Then click there and enable Google Tag Gateway. The process will be very similar to what I showed you with Google Tag Manager. And that's pretty much it. Once you complete those steps, then Google Analytics will be loaded from your own domain. So, should you be using Google Tag Gateway? If you're already using server-side tagging, then the answer is not necessarily. Because maybe your server-side setup is already handling proxying, maybe the requests are already sent to your own domain, even without the subfolder, maybe the subdomain of your server-side endpoint and your website have similar IP addresses, which mitigates the impact of intelligent tracking prevention. For example, if you're using Stape for your server-side setup and you have enabled their custom loader and their cookie keeper power-ups, then you're already getting the benefits that you would have gotten with the Google Tag Gateway. In that case, you kind of don't need it. Also, keep in mind that the setup that I showed in this video is not for server-side tagging. It is for those who are using just client-side setup, which is also known as the regular web tracking, and then you want to get the benefits from Google Tag Gateway. The setup for the server-side GTM might be different, but that's probably a topic for another video. But if you are not using server-side tagging and you are focusing mainly on Google Analytics, Google Ads, website Google Tag Manager, then Google Tag Gateway is definitely something that you should enable because then your requests will be sent to your own domain and the data accuracy of your setup should increase. On the other hand, if your website Google Tag Manager container has Google's products, but also non-Google tags like Metapixel, you should still enable Google Tag Gateway. It will not improve the accuracy of your Facebook tracking, but your Google Analytics tags, Google Ads, website Google Tag Manager in general, the data that you track with them will be more accurate. And that's the end of this video. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of Google Tag Gateway. In general, I would say Google did a great job here. The setup was quick and very simple, and it can definitely increase your data accuracy if you are not using server-side tagging. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. 
that will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.